But we're going to go ahead and introduce our first panel. We're going to start to the right of me, you know, the woman of the hour. I love Dot Hood. I, I love their brand, man. This, this, this is an incredible duo, this brand. Um, they have an amazing team, but this duo is just, you know, just speaking for itself. I want to make sure you get your time to introduce yourself, girl, because I just love what y'all do. Shout out to I love Dot Hood. Thank you so much. My name is Bria George. You can pull your mic a little bit closer Thank to you. you. Yep. All right. Is that good? Yep. All right, cool. My name is Bria George. I am one half of I Love Thy Hood. We are a black sustainability company in Philadelphia. We provide orange trash cans to residents and businesses throughout the city. We have about 150 throughout Philadelphia currently, and we're continually growing and growing what it means to be sustainable. Yes, yes, and I'm gonna skip and go to the left of me. I'm gonna introduce our next panelist today. Yo, peace, how y'all feeling? <laughs> whoop, whoop. My name's PLX. I'm the director of the Philly Peace Park and vice president of Peacetown Commons Land Trust. And basically the mission um, is to eliminate generational, excuse me, all right. The, the mission is, you know, a land-based mission, you know, get black people back to land, eliminating generational poverty and generational issues through land. All right, and then we got our last panelist right here to the right of me. How y'all doing today? My name is Hakeem DeVore the founder, uh, executive director of Inner City Peace Organization here in Philadelphia, also the creator of Pushing Philly, uh, the creator of Inside Out Construction, Inner City Herbs, and the list goes on. No doubt. Um, and as you can see, we got a stack panel today. You know, we want to make sure that we brought a broad perspective of, you know, what it means to really bring a safe haven from violence here in the city of Philadelphia. And that's, again, what this panel will be entitled is a nature as a safe haven from violence. So as we all know, the uptake in violence and just gun violence here in the city of Philadelphia. So we wanted to make sure we shed light on it, but in a different way, bringing some environmental justice conversations surrounding social justice issues as well. And I'm going to start with, I love that hood. You know, when it comes down to the biggest misconception about sustainable, uh, sustainable greener Philadelphia, what is your thoughts on that? Um, I think that really, especially when it comes to black and brown neighborhoods, and that's something that we embed in I love that hood, is the fact that we don't care. Right, so you you go into na certain neighborhoods, you see trash on the ground, um, you don't see a lot of trash cans, and the first misconception and thought is, you know, these folks here don't care, but it's not that. There's a gap in resources that are there. So if I take, you know, my talents over to Jenkintown, if I take my talents to Abington, if I take them to predominantly white neighborhoods, they have all of these resources, but in a way that they don't necessarily need them. Right. Yeah. So there's trash cans all over, you know, the sidewalk. Well, who's walking down Jenkintown? Ain't no sidewalks over there. Um, there's nothing by those bus stops. So when you take it back into our neighborhoods that's not there. That's essentially how I Love Thy Hood got founded is we understood that our special service district in Germantown, it didn't exist anymore. So those resources that were supposed to be poured into that neighborhood were not there. There's also a level of responsibility that these businesses, um, major corporations that you know implant themselves in these neighborhoods are required to do. So fun fact, if you sell food um, from a, a store or anything like that, you are required to have a trash can within 50 feet of your uh, of your store, you go past a McDonald's, a KFC, or anything like that. Um, there's no trash can there, and so I think really it's the fact that there are folks in our neighborhoods that do care about where we live. We do care about the resources that we have, um, but we just don't have them. And I think that's just one of the biggest misconceptions. I like that. And I want to swing it to you as well, um, Mr. Inner City Peace. You know, when it comes down to a misconception about a sustainable, greener Philadelphia, what's your thoughts on that? Uh, I would just say togetherness. We lack a lot of uh, engagement from the community. You know, some people may register for a cleanup or to come out and volunteer in the community, but that might be the only time we see them. So I think like best us coming together would be what we need. Mm -hmm. And Mr. X, I want to ask you, you know, when it comes down to just the, the title of today's panel discussion, Nature as a Safe Haven from Violence, what's your thoughts on that? Is that even a true statement? Right, yeah. Um, it's definitely true. When we hear violence, we might think uh, one specific type of violence, but there's all types of violence that's happening because, um, you know, we're not in tune with nature, we're not in tune with the land, we're not in tune with... Uh, our spiritual selves, which is directly in tune with, you know, nature and land. So you're thinking domestic issues, you're thinking uh, um, um, environmental violence, which is neglect of our, you know, city, the neglect of land and neglect of uh, properties. Um, so that's environmental violence that 
that we gotta live through that we don't necessarily think about, but that's directly tied to the violence that we see um, amongst ourselves. And while we're coming outside doing the things we do is um, um, the state and nature of our environment. No doubt. I appreciate your, your transparent answer. And Love That Hood, I want to get you back into today's conversation because you have had a successful, a successful community-led initiative and a project here in the city of Philadelphia. So by you having an actual community-led project initiative um, and that was successful, ha have you seen some reduce in violence and also more greener spaces? Oh, absolutely. I think that there's a way to focus on what is not um, but our goal is to focus on what is, right? So we have over 600 and 650 people who have reached out to us that are saying, hey, I do the exact same thing you do. Hey, I wanna have a cleanup. Hey, I wanna you know, educate you know, within my school with some of these resources. So for us, it's, it's highlighting those folks and highlighting that neighborhood. Now, I don't know necessarily if, if, if violence is, is, is that correlation, because I think you know, this can happen anywhere, right? I can turn on the news and look at any specific neighborhood and, and violence can occur. So I'm not necessarily sure if there's a connection there, but I, have, I know that when you bring a community together, when you connect people, there becomes a level of communication that has to happen. We have met so many folks that otherwise I would have never seen, that I would have never known, that I live right next to, right? And so when you bring that goodness out, that kind of overpowers everything else. Does it still continue to happen? Yes, but if we f focus on that, you kind of miss those moments of the good that can kind of come from that. I'm with that. And, you know, um, Inner City Peace, I want to get you back into the conversation by asking you, what's the most critical issue not being addressed surrounding an eco-friendly community in Philadelphia? Uh... What's the most critical issue not being discussed when it's talked about an eco-friendly Philadelphia? That's kind of a hard one to answer, but I'm gonna just say money. That's a big misconception, money. We really don't need money to beautify our communities. All we need to do is come together and we can make a big change. And that's simple as that, because I'm gonna go off of what she said as far as the uh, violence, and the nature, it, it coincides with each other. You know, having a clean community, if you beautify your community, you can definitely change the mindset to the people, you know? So, no, that's true, that's true, you know? And I wanna ask you, X, you know, to get you back into the conversation, what is the one most critical issue not being discussed when it comes to the table of a greener and an eco-friendlier uh, Philadelphia? Um, one of the issues not being discussed? Not being discussed. Uh. I, I got to bring it, will it back into what I said originally, um, that environmental violence. Um, because in communities where you don't have environmental violence, you, you don't see as much crime. So I believe that, uh, um, as the brother said, it doesn't take money, but it, we have to come together and not rely on others that's not part of our communities to solve our issues within our communities. And through that, we can have outcomes like I love the hood has outcomes and we can have outcomes where though we're uh, um, coming together without the money, but just doing those block cleanups or whatnot to eliminate, you know, the barriers. No doubt. And one thing that I push right now is, or oh, I've been pushing forever, is collaboration over competition. So I want to ask you, Inner City Peace, you know, when it comes down to local officials and local government agencies and then organizations such as yours, community organizations, how can we work together to integrate more of a greener, eco-friendlier Philadelphia? Uh, well, for me, for the last few years, uh, getting a system in play has been a little hard. Because when you're dealing with different departments, you know, different department heads, there's no one to hold each other accountable, you know. So once you get everybody on a one-track system, you're able to put something in place. Like right now, we're fighting for a new CLIP office and a new more beautiful committee office on our side of the city because, you know, they're only stationed in North Philadelphia. So if you do want to make, uh, make change and get some bags or brooms and stuff like that, you have to travel to American Street, which is in North Philadelphia. So I don't think that is cool for our community leaders and constituents to have to go all the way to North Philadelphia to get supplies, you know? So, so what part of the city you represent, just so people can get out South Philly and uh, Southwest Philly, but we conduct clean, we organize cleanups all throughout the city. I beautify the, the city, my own tools, my own trucks. So only thing we lacking right now is a system in place where the council members 
can actually do their job. I ain't even mean to say that, but that's the truth. You've know? <laughs> <laughs> you been real. That's what it, yeah. that's what the conversation today was for us, yeah, for us for to sure. be real. Yes, um, and I love that hood. I want to ask you the same question. You know, how can we collaborate together with more um, local organizations and government agencies to make sure that we are bringing forth a greener Philadelphia? So I would say that making the resources that they tell us are available, that they're actually available. So when you call these offices, when they say, hey, you know, we're, we're going to show up and do this or call this number and we're going to connect you to X, Y, Z, half the numbers don't work. Half the people don't even work there. Half the time, I don't even know how to get to what you're asking me to get to. If I want to throw out a mattress, I don't know the proper way to do it. I don't know who to go to. If I, like he said, if I want to get tools to clean up, number one, who knows about Clip? Number two, how can I get those tools as accessible three are there enough of them to give them to us so i think number one it's the resources that they're consistently providing to us they need to make sure that the re the resources are actually accessible so these websites are updated that they're all aggregated in one place i gotta go to peter to paul to go to pam to go to to prince to get all the things that i need and then half the time peter is sending me to paul to send to prince and prince doesn't work there anymore and so you're asking a lot of us to do the work when they're not doing the work back and forth. The second thing is to show up to events like this, to show up to our cleanups, to show up to the positive things because the moment there's a looting that happens in Center City, I can't turn the TV off and that's the first thing I hear. The first thing I see is a council member that's you know up and down marching down the block because that's what looks good for their campaign because somebody got shot. And I'm not saying that those things are not important, but this is just like this as an example of what we have here. Where are those community leaders? Where are those people that are here? Where is that coverage? There should be news here. There should be all of this. This is something beautiful. But if something happened, we'd be the first people on the news, right? So it's it's giving the attention to the things that we are saying as important and, and to give that focus just as much as we're giving focus to the things that um, may be, you know, violent or, you know, in, in, the, in that regard. So I think just holding them accountable for the things that they preach and making sure that they show up for us in the way that they ask us to show up for them when they're campaigning down the streets for you know the next thing in office. Yeah, I like that. Thank you for that, that answer. Um, and I want to ask you, based off what her answer was, um, when it comes down to confronting these potential challenges that both of them actually just discussed, just from your standpoint and your personal opinion, how have you been able to combat these challenges? I would say they aren't challenges. I would say. Um, we already know what the deal is. Uh, we don't have any friends. We don't have any friends. So do for self. Uh, at the same time, we should hold, you know, the officials and elected officials and whatever they may be accountable, but we can't wait on them. Um, it's um, uh, immediate, we, we gotta act in immediacy of like grabbing the open land, grabbing the open properties in our communities and doing something with them to build up our nation, um, to build up our nation within this city. Uh, so I would say that they are challenges, but we have to act as that if they aren't challenges and um, have a, 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 a self-determination mentality of, you know, we can't wait around for them to do for us. Inner city peace. Uh, yes, I wanted to add real fast that uh, it's a scientific fact that when you beautify your own community and you plant the right greenery, that the plants releases chemicals, you know, dopamine and serotonin that's going to promote good health and good peace within the individual. So we have to beautify our communities. We have to stay on the councilmen, our state reps, our local community leaders, our uh, local districts, the more beautiful committee. We have to stay on these people and make sure we hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask you, I love that hood, this next question. It's about intersectionality, right? I want to ask you, how does intersectionality play a role in Philadelphia growing economy as far as eco-friendly when it comes down to zip codes, race, gender, class, et cetera? Ooh, that's a loaded question, huh? You just see <laughs> through everything in that one question. Um, I mean, I would say... I mean, economically, of course, that, that plays a part. I mean, there is certain attention that are given to certain zip codes that aren't in other places. But I think for, for us and for I Love Thy Hood, um, what the gentleman said on the end is very true. Um, is about putting that power back into the hands of the people and keeping that focus there. So 
again, you know, going back to the mission of I Love Thy Hood, we started because we wanted to be able to, to put that power back in people's hands to not say, okay, you have to wait for the city to clean up. You have to wait for these resources to come, that you have that ability to make that change yourself. You don't even need our cans to do it. We hope we use, you use our cans to do it. But I mean, you can take a pair of gloves and a bag and you can walk outside and do that today. Mm -hmm. My parents grew up in the 50s and 60s and they talk a lot about that growing up in North Carolina and coming outside and everybody swept, everybody, you know, took a little bit of paint and Mr. Jerry came down and planted some plants and Miss Susan came down and she painted your wall. And there was a level of, if my home, if my space does not look well, then it's a representation of me. And if the person next to me is unable to do that, then that is a reflection of the community that's within. So the biggest thing I would say, it's not just about learning how to make a sustainable neighborhood. It's not about just making it clean. It's changing the mindset. All of us around here know for a fact that if I see trash on the ground, if I see something that is broken, if I see something that's disassembled, it's not good. But how do I stop that person from walking over that? How do I stop that kid from dropping that Frito bag on the ground? How do I stop somebody by going, that's not my problem. That's what we have to focus on to change. Odell, and Mr. X, I wanna get you into this conversation um, by asking an education question, right? What role can schools and education programs play to connecting students with nature and teaching more teachers conflict resolution skills with outdoor experiences? Uh, every, every school can have a garden. That's one way. Every school can have garden and every school can have land-based educational uh, curriculum implemented within their, uh, you know, systems. Uh, that's something that could be done, like, immediately within, you know, charter schools, public schools. And also, um, I'm having, you know, brothers like yourself come out doing programming um, uh, to do you know conflict resolution or whatnot um even just the nature of, of what the brother said earlier um you know the plants you know letting off certain chemicals uh having yeah, education ha yeah ha having those type of programs within the school or whatnot will definitely help and what's that can I, I add some like we uh we also created a program within Pushing Philly. It's called uh, our Pushing Philly Junior Environmentalist Program, where we teach the children 12 to 17 uh, education the importance of recycling and keeping their own community clean and stuff like that. And uh, we're looking forward to doing one for adults within this year. So that's, that's actually my next question, and I want to add it to you just so you can you know elaborate a little bit more. How can the creative community actually contribute to the design and the activation of more green spaces in urban communities such as the one we're in right now in Philadelphia when it comes to gun violence? Simply engage with the community organizations that's doing the work. Be a part of it. Actually, come out. You can. You might teach us some things. Take charge yourself. We we need all the help we can get in building a uh, sustainable Philly. Mm -hmm. Be always honest. Like a lot, I don't mean to cut you off, but a lot of the questions that she asks are very complex, and we do have the answers, but they're not short answers. You know, all these answers are, are real. You know, we got the solutions, but it's going to take us as a community to come together. Thank you. I appreciate that. And um, I love that hood. I want to swing it back to you and I want to ask a question um, specifically around mental health, right? Mm -hmm. When it comes down to mental health and emotional intelligence, what role do you see a greener Philadelphia playing in um, an activation of helping to reduce gun violence? I think the environment that you're around plays a lot into how you feel, right? So where I live um, in Germantown, I live right on uh, Wayne and Shelton. The way I have to walk out of my door should actually be studied. And it, I don't even think about it so much until I go to my parents' home and they live in Northeast Philadelphia, or I go to my brother's home and he lives in Maryland. The thought process I have to go through to open my door is insane. And that's not even something that I should be going through. So I have to look left, look right, then open the door because it's right on, on, Wayne, or on Shelton Ave. And then I have to make sure that a group of school kids aren't coming by and are about to fight the guy at the halal truck or somebody at the Rite Aid 
I just heard my citizens app go off in 300 feet. Somebody just robbed it for six Gatorades, but I got to take my dog out and then walk across the street. There's, there's a lot of, of that that you know sort of occurs. But I also think that there were safer spaces for people to be, people to engage. I live across the street from Mastery Charter, and I see hundreds of kids just pouring out right on the corner, right? They in Burger King, Citizen App going off, they in Popeyes, now they down the street at the hair store. And I'm like, if there was something for these kids to do, some place for them to go, if the school did it, if we did it, if the community did it, but there should, there should be spaces that um, allow them to get out of that mindset. But I also think too as well, it's not plucking somebody out of the neighborhood that they are in. I have the ability to move out of my neighborhood. I stay in my neighborhood because I want to be a part of their community because there's nothing wrong with that community. I need to be the beacon to bring those resources there, right? right. So it's 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 creating those spaces. It's it's changing the environment. It's going to my grocery store next door and getting somebody to come in and do a check on them because they sell in fish that is slimy on the outside and it smells like God knows what is in there. But if I took that and plopped it somewhere else, it wouldn't be like that. And I also have the ability to get in my car and drive somewhere else. But that's not the point. The point is, is that the things in the spaces and the environments that we are in should be able to serve us. They should be able to give us what we need. We should not have to leave those environments to go somewhere else. So I should be able to have a baby and send my kid up the school to the street. I should be able to send my kid down to the park and know that the swing is attached and I can take my dog to this park and they have all the other things that all these other neighborhoods have to do. So if you don't put those resources in that neighborhood, what message are you sending to those people there? A, you're telling them to go somewhere else, but why should I have to do that? Or B, you're telling me every single day, you don't matter. I don't need to stock the Dollar General because you don't matter. I don't need to stock the Rite Aid because you don't matter. I don't need to clean up the trash over here because you don't matter. And what is that mindset saying to somebody? What is that saying to a child every day that has to walk outside and step over and step over and I can't go to the park, I can't do this, there's no plants up and down my street? What are you saying to somebody when you say that? So you can either A, and again, I'm not judging anybody, like to each his own, whatever you need to do for yourself, that is great, and I don't judge anybody who removes themselves from that environment. But for me, the best way that I continue to be an educated black woman, to be a beacon, is to keep my behind, excuse me, in that neighborhood <laughs> and give it the resources that it needs. No doubt. And I want to, yes, yes, we can definitely make some noise for that. We can definitely make some noise for that. Um, and Mr. X, I want to ask you that same question when it comes down to mental health and emotional intelligence. You know, what role do you see that that actually playing to help reduce the violence here in the city of Philadelphia? Yeah, uh, it, it plays a great role. Um, the mental health issues, the health and wellness issues within our community, like I said uh, earlier, um, everything is interconnected. You know, where we live, where we work, where we pray, um, the places where we go to get educated, the places where we go to uh, um, have fun, everything is interconnected. Um, the violence we see is interconnected with the mental health issues, which is related to nature. So. Um, we, you know, as you know, African people, new African people, have to like take immediate action. Once again, like everybody that can hear the sound of my voice, like take immediate action. Go back and see your communities, find an organization that's doing them work, or do the work yourself. Uh, um, and creating, you know, a, a, a outlet. You know, you might have a vacant lot on your block. Do something with that vacant lot. You know, um, start a program that you know the youth on your block could come to, and in that vacant lot. Um, it's, it's about immediate action. And then um, um, a part of that, the, the public safety issue is not relying on, you know, the city, the state to uh, solve our public safety issues. Uh, the, the black men in here, we have to, and the black women also, um, we have to take control and take a frontline approach in the public safety issues of our community. Mm -hmm. no, no doubt, no doubt. Did you want to add something to it before I go to my next question? Uh, I did, if I could. Yeah, please. But I think also, even too, and I don't want to contradict what I just said or contradict what anybody else said, especially I think it's also in, in mental health and to be mindful as we all continue to do that work, that it is still okay to call on these leaders, to call on the support that is there, because only in a brown or black community are we required to both be the victim as well as the hero, right? Mm -hmm. So we're <laughs> expected to be hurt and mm -hmm. save our own behind. So it's mm -hmm. like, you do the work, and you do the things, and you do the things, and that is okay. There's nothing wrong with that empowerment. That's where our black history came from, you know what I mean? If it wasn't for Black Panthers, if it weren't for those 
people, those folks that looked at us that didn't say, you know what, I'm not waiting for nobody, a lot of things wouldn't have happened. However, as you are doing that work, as you are doing that, check in with yourself and check in with your mental self, but also still hold these other things accountable. Because again, you can't save yourself all the time. And again, it is very burdensome to again, be a victim as also be a hero in a lot of these situations. For sure. Uh I would like to just add real fast to piggyback off of what both of them said. Uh, what you eat and what you see is actually who you are, you know? So having a healthy environment and a healthy body, healthy nutrition is your actual being, you know? So we have to educate our children and our adults, so. I appreciate that. And, you know, me being involved in the creative community, I wanted to make sure that I asked questions on behalf of the creative community as well. So, and I, I'm a big a fan and believer of storytelling. So I wanted to ask, and I'm going to start with you, uh, when it comes down to uh, leveraging art and storytelling as creatives, you know, how can we bring awareness to making sure that we are in ownership of it, first and foremost, but bring awareness of the role in nature when reducing violence within our communities? Uh, something that we got in place now that we've been doing for a few years, so we, we organize community cleanups, which would clean up the trash, beautify the community, clean up the trash, trim the trees, plant flowers, and also do some painting. So I found that to be very helpful in the situations, especially with the illegal dumping. So after I go around there and I clean up and I actually cut the trees and I actually paint a little small mural or just paint the objects that we got out there, I see a very uh, dramatic dramatic mm -hmm. slowdown and dumping in that particular area, you know? So I had reached out to a few council members where frequent dump spots that we clean up showed them proof, whereas though we need a camera here, you know? We need signs saying you're gonna be held accountable for littering, you know? So it, it's not all on us. We need stuff in place, like visually, to help the community, you know? So I found that painting and making sure that we trim the trees and plant flowers has been real lucrative for us. Mm -hmm. in Southwest Philadelphia. And with that, I want to ask you pretty much the same question. How can, you know, leveraging art and storytelling in the creative community actually help reducing the violence when it comes down to actually being a part of nature within Philadelphia? Yeah, so um, the art and, you know, the create, creative community is definitely a major aspect that can be utilized and that needs to be utilized more to uh, combat, you know, the, um, the violence. Um, we know that, and it's not just the youth. Um, a lot of people talk about the youth. It's, it's not just the youth. Um, the adults are just as um, infected with this self-hate mentality as the youth. So, um, on all sectors, and um, I think you were talking about um, 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 intersectionality earlier, um, mm -hmm. it's going to take uh, um, um, the whole community. And, and, and art, through art programming um, and creative programming, uh, could definitely be used to um, combat some of those issues. Mm -hmm. And I kind of want to switch the question up a little bit to you. I love that hood when it comes down to uh, the creative community, right? Because when it comes down to being creative, you all have already done that with a little, you know, extra branding through the orange trash cans, the hoodies, and all of that stuff. So how has you, how has been using creative, um, artistic ways to express what you all are doing has helped you all? I think it's it's given something for people to kind of see and you know stick out. A lot of people have asked us like why, you know, orange and it's honestly a simple question like you can't miss it. You know, our cans are really not any different if you go into a Lowe's and you pick up a 32 gallon black can, but if I stuck that on the side of the street, you probably just walk past it, but you really can't miss a bright orange trash can. Um, it's giving us it's given us different ways to think of what sustainability means and what being cool is, right? So the one thing we always say is we're more than trash cans. We're we're there to be consultants, to be beacons on to show you how we're here to shift mindset. Um, the level of creativity is, is us exploring what it means to be a black sustainable clothing wear, right? So having cleaner things or being streetwear, having a sustainability company doesn't need to, and I don't mean this offensively, but it doesn't need to always be like leaves and green, right? It could, it could be cool, it could be funky, it could be dope, it could be artistic. There's so many variations to our logos and I don't take any of the credit. My husband, Matthew, that's not here, does all that stuff. I'm just here for brand management. <laughs> but, um, you know, th that element has a 
has allowed us to kind of to be creative and also partner with other folks. We have our our cans have had really cool you know designs on them. We've we've worked with um, different graffiti artists to tag our cans. Um, our t our cans get tagged all the time. To be very honest, and a lot of people have asked us like, well, why don't you clean off the can? And I'm like, it's not dirt. It's not it's not bad. It's it's somebody's form of expression. And if you tag that can and also threw away your water bottle, then I can't be mad at you for it. <laughs> That's real. And inner city piece, I want to get you back into the conversation by, by specifically asking you a question on how can we get youth involved into more greener Philadelphia's by using art and create more creative spaces? You said get the youth involved? How can we get the youth involved by using art and more creative spaces when it comes down to an eco-friendly Philadelphia? We need more programs with Parks and Recs. Currently, I create programs for Parks and Recs and the school district. So my program is in a few schools and in a few parks, you know. So that's really a major uh, ordeal. After school programs are important. Saturday morning programs are important. Summer programs are important. And all of those can be created and, and funded by the city, which we can fund it ourselves. That's what I've been doing. But you know, and as a, as an whole, we really need that funding so other people with other expertise can come out and teach these kids some education. You know, can you elaborate a little bit on the some of the programs that you have, just so we can understand what is out here? Yes. So we have a junior environmentalist program where we teach the kids how to use different tools. You know, for career reasons, it's really a life skills program and awesome. all and all. You know, so. We have, uh, we have different tools that we teach the kids how to use, how to trim the trees, clean up, organize cleanups for the community, stuff like that. All right, and Ms. Dex, I wanna ask you the same, same question. You know, When it comes down to getting the youth involved, how can we use more art and creative spaces to get the youth more involved in an eco-friendly or Philadelphia? Uh, the answer is land. Bring the youth back to the land, um, rather that uh, the rec centers and their open spaces, get the youth from, um, inside, get them back in tune with nature, get them on that land and do land-based programs. The Philly Peace Park is a land-based organization and that's the very nature of our program. And we bring the youth out to the land. We let them take their sneaks and their socks off, walk in the soil. We let them get as dirty as they want to get. And we teach them through, through that process of being on the land, teach them how to garden teach them how to have respect for each other, teach them how to have respect for um, their environment by not throwing trash, mm -hmm. teach them those conflict resolution skills that you were talking about earlier, whereas though a lot of youth don't have those conflict resolution skills, so it results in the very, that violence that we're talking about. So um, it's getting back to the land, I believe, um, and adding those creative aspects in there, um, the uh, creative and artistic aspects, because our youth are creative, they're artistic, they want to do, you know, those type of things, but bring it all back to the land, get them all back on that land and outside of the buildings. I'm with that. And uh, we got about 10 minutes left, so I want to ask you all the same question. Um, a little bit about some of your short-term goals, and I want to start with you, um, Inner City Peace. What are some of your inner, um, I'm sorry, what are some of your eco-friendly short-term goals within the next five years? Uh, definitely getting a nice system in play for uh, community members who organize cleanups and stuff like that. Definitely getting a new clip office or more clip and more beautiful committee office on this side of Philly. That's something that we're pushing for right now, real heavy, and just educating the people and keeping it clean. Simple. I'm with it, and I love that hood. I want to ask you that same question. Um, what are your eco-friendly short-term goals for the next five years? So I would say one thing um, is that we have started building out what it means to be consultants in that space. Um, so I spoke about it earlier, how one of our biggest frustrations is that even for us as we were trying to build out our businesses, we never knew where to go. And if we could be that resource hub for people to say, okay, I know that I'm gonna go to I Love Thy Hood because I'm gonna learn how to discard of this specific piece of trash, or I'm gonna learn how to obtain the resources I need to have a cleanup, and I know I can go to them for that. I think the second thing, which is a, the question that you kind of asked earlier, is how we're, how we're learning to connect with um, younger folks. So we go to schools and we speak all the time, we give them trash cans and essentially educate them on how to be more sustainable. But I think the third component and kind of tied into that is you can give kids what we think we want to give them, right? And again, this is, I think all the resources that you guys said is, is awesome. I think, you know, putting things back in rec centers is great. But also, 
things like that are a bit cookie cutter, right? Like we've, we've kind of been doing that. And I think we have to meet kids where they are, right? So what they're interested in, what they're trying to do, how they learn. And it, it can feel irritating, right? When you just walk around and you just renegade in all the time, but that's how they <laughs> gain information. That's what's important to them. So learning how to meet that. We have a scholarship program that we just launched this year. Um, one of our first recipients is a 14 year old named Jabri uh, who lives in Germantown and he has his own car wash cleaning business. We gifted him $1,000 awesome. um, that he will use throughout the year. We meet with him once a month, and essentially we give him all the tools that we have. I, we work with him to build out his brand strategy, help him build a site, learn what he really wants to do, and then teach him how he can take that back to his school and kind of you know teach his friends. So right now he kind of doesn't want to do the car wash thing and he wants to build out his own clothing brand, but teaching him, you know, how do I get sustainable clothing? What are the best ways to get those resources? How does he build out a business, you know, mm -hmm. as an LLC? These kids want to do more and I think it's, Sure, you can give them tools, you can teach them to do these things, but put that power back in their hands. They're smart, they're tech savvy, and they're way smarter than me and 10 times faster <laughs> at everything that I can do. Mm -hmm. So give them those things to implement to make some of those things real. The biggest thing that we say is you do not have to wait till you're 18 years old to launch a business because one thing that adults love is, is kids asking for stuff because they don't really care. I'm 30 and I'm grown, I ask for stuff, and they're like, girl, bye. But I'm like, you're 14 and cute, <laughs> so you better ask on up. But it's giving them things to make things like that for them real. So that would be some of our goals as well. The third thing, again, is just continuing to build ourselves up as a cool, sustainable, black-owned clothing wear business. So we have these bright orange sweatshirts that we've worked on different designs and T-shirts and shoes and things. We're working on dog poop bags and things like that. Really also, again, the element that I say is to meet people where they are. Our cans are cumbersome. Picking up trash is disgusting. Like nobody has said it, but it is nasty, okay? People throw away gross things. And that is something, if you are blessed to do that, which I have learned to put on a mask and be okay with it, then that is great. But not everybody is there. So how do we meet people where they are? How do I give you a sustainable tote bag that you can use to go to the grocery store? How do I give you, again, a sustainable poop bag that you can use? How do I give you a smaller can that you can use just in your home. How do we meet people where they are and give those those tools instead of burdening them with what we want them to do? Give them the steps in between so that when they're ready, they can make those steps. But there's a couple things in between, and we're just here to be the beacons to educate and how to do that. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And Ms. X, I want to ask you the same question about your short-term goals as far as eco be them being <clears throat> eco-friendly. Yes, yes. So right now, um, you know, the Philly Peace Park right now, we're located in this neighborhood, right around the corner, 49th and Gerard, the West Philly Peace Park. But right now, land-based, self-determined New Africans are building a school for the youth that we're talking about. Um, 22nd and Jefferson, North Philly Peace Park, we're building a school. It's a real construction site with uh, youth from Youth Build Charter School helping us build this school. Uh, black contractors right now are building this school um, using um, a black designer designed this school. So in short, there's a school being built that'll be done by spring of next year. Awesome. For the youth of this city. Um, and, and we want all y'all to get involved. We want all y'all to come up, visit. We want all of you to offer your programs, all of you to offer uh, whatever expertise or skills or even knowledge you may have to the youth. All right, we appreciate that, thank you. I'm looking forward to the next five years with all three of you for sure. And I have my last question I'm asked to each one of you all, which will be a distinctive question that I created for you based on all the research I did on each one of you. Um, so my question, I'm gonna start with you, Mr. X. You know, When it comes down to uh, what you have going on, what is one trait or behavior that in your experience is most likely bringing a greener, eco-friendlier Philadelphia as far as leadership, specifically in leadership? I would say uh, it, it, it's spiritual. Um, it's a spiritual trait. You know, um, it, it, it's very spiritual because get up every morning and say you're going to do this work for your people um, with all the obstacles, mental health issues, your job, your family, whatever. Um, you got to have, you really got to have, uh, and you only got to be the most spiritual person, but it is a spiritual thing that gets you up every morning and to be a leader in your community with everything happening and going on. 
Thank you. I like that. I actually love that answer. Honestly, truly, yeah, you got to tap into, you know, a higher power to honestly keep going, especially in today's world. And I'm going to ask you, Inner Center Peace, what do you find to be the most successful method to incentivize Philadelphia youth to actually join some of these community activity programs, rec centers, or organizations? Uh, introducing them to actually what environmental justice is, you know, mm -hmm. the education. And I think every Earth Day, we should all come together and we should do something real special to where as though they will look forward to coming out cleaning up, you know? I think we should educate them like that, starting with that. I'm with it. And I love that hood. As a community leader, um, you have firsthand experienced challenges that residents face in neighborhoods that are affected by violence, right? So how can local initiatives harness the power of nature by creating safe havens for community residents here in the city of Philadelphia? Oof. Again, loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to make sure we brought a, a, enough information to EcoFest this year. Yeah. Um, so again, I think that it's it's looking at what that specific community needs, right? So a lot of our resources are cookie cutter, right? And so it says you need to do A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and this works. But if you're bringing those resources where environment has gaps or that community has different gaps and those resources are not applicable. So it's making sure that the things that we're offering, we're, able act we're actually able to get them to the folks that need them in the way that they're able to receive them. Mm -hmm. And with that, thank you all. Um, and this actually wraps up our panel today here with these three individuals. Can we make some noise one time? I think they were an incredible panel. Um, again, that this conversation was entitled Nature as a Safe Haven from Violence. So um, these three individuals brought together, you know, an array of perspectives, and I hope that you all were able to learn something from them. I'm going to give them some time to introduce themselves before we get out of here, and I'm going to start with you to my, my right. I love that hood. Perfect. My name is Bria George. I am one of the co-founders of I Love Thy Hood. You can find us at www.ilovethyhood.org. We're on Instagram at, at I Love Thy Hood. If you're interested in getting a trash can, if you want to team up with us, if you just have a question, you just want to chat. I also do brand management for I Love Thy Hood, so also hit us up. You can hit us up at ilovethyhood at gmail.com. No doubt. I'm going to speak it to my left. Yes, yes, yes. My name is Brother P. Lee X, uh, Director of the Philly Peace Park and Vice President of Peacetown Commons Land Trust. One thing I didn't mention, the, uh, the land trust is to do exactly what I've been mentioning here, grab the land and keep it in our community. So you can visit us, uh, North Philly Peace Park or West Philly Peace Park, anywhere online. Um, I'm going to be out here, so if you want to come up, you know, we can talk, we can rap, I can exchange info and all that good stuff. But uh, you can find us, Philly Peace Park, online. No doubt. And then right here to my right. Uh, Hakeem DeVore, founder, uh, executive director of Inner City Peace and Pushing Philly. Uh, you can find us on social media. You can definitely come out, get involved if you need help cleaning up your block. Or you can also uh, find us on social media. We also have monthly block captain meetings. I meant to uh, Ben mention that it's real important that our block captains, even if you don't have one, try to sign up to with the uh, Philadelphia More Beautiful Committee to get engaged and become a block captain yourself, 18 or over. It, it is no uh, requirements, but 18 or over. So making sure we get together every month with these block captain meetings and uh, just engaging with each other. Yes, yes, and we're going to do some more engaging right here live in person in West Philadelphia at One Art Community Center. We appreciate y'all for tuning in and coming together, coming to the front of the stage to listen to our panel. Make some noise once again for our panelists. And, and one more thing, we need y'all. We need y'all, exactly. Need That's a great way to end it.